we started thinking about what kind of products could we focus on that we could use as the core part of this demonstration. And we decided that we would create a fictional car company called Mega Motors. And uh, Mega Motors, uh, they, uh, you know, nothing says mobility or says wireless more than cars. They're everywhere. They're moving around. They're certainly not wires connected to them. So it seemed like a great platform that we could use to demonstrate all of these capabilities. And today what we're going to do is take a walk through a day in the life of connected products or anywhere products that, belong, that are uh, manufactured and sold and supported by uh, Mega Motors. So Mega Motors, make, you know, cars are complex products. So just like many of you, they have a need to be able to service these products in the field. And uh, they've chosen to brand their service or their remote service program as One Star. So any familiarity with other, similarity to other companies or things that are like that is purely coincidental. And uh, the goal here is to reduce service cost. And what we're going to do in our scenario is we're going to be a service tech who's tasked with working with this system. So let's just jump over and uh, log in. Where'd we go? Oh, wait, sorry. So just to make life interesting, they uh, gave me a Macintosh here. <laughs> They said, oh, it's just like you're used to. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do here is I'm the, I'm the service technician. I'm going to log in. So I'm, my, my username is one tech. And when I log into the system, we immediately see one of the new features of Exceda 6. And that's the ability to rebrand or reskin the product on a per user basis. So each user can have their own, or each different group of users can have their own branded look of the product. And, uh, Mega Motors you know, uses this to give each of their dealers uh, a, a different view that's very specific to them. In this case, our rebranding is featuring a really uh, weird shade of green that you can tell a software engineer made the color selection and not somebody who's a, who really understands colors or fashion. So not that, you know, not, that sir, not that software engineers don't have that, but I think you get what I mean. I didn't pick it, in other words. So. Uh, so we mentioned car companies sell through different channels, so they may have different dealers. For example, Vans R Us, they sell trucks. They have a couple of different kinds, Econo lines, and, and uh, we can see what vehicles they have. Uh, Downtown Motors sells cars. Then we have somebody like Avis, which is a fleet buyer. Again, they have a whole set of things. So they may be another channel or another group of people who need to be able to, to monitor and uh, see uh, systems that are out there. And each one of these different categories or dealer groups can be given their own separate container where they can manage uh, the rules and manage the users and so on around their product. As a one-star service technician, I have the ability to come down and just look at all the vehicles by type. And I'm going to pick one and drill in on it. And when I do that, we're going to be taken to the device dashboard for this particular car. And we can see who owns it. And we see some properties here. These properties were used to dynamically generate that tree structure that we saw on the previous page. So, by filling in these properties, either by rule or um, by integration with other apps or manually, we can move things automatically around in the, in the system. Now, it's, in a mobile device, it's not enough to just know there's a problem or know that something broke and when it broke. You really need the context of when it happened. And what we see down here is there's another new feature of Exceda 6, which is a map module. So we've added the ability to um, have location carried in the system. So it's a new data item or new data type uh, location makes possible different kinds of location-based services. One of them is mapping. We can see on the map here the last 34 something uh, locations that have been reported from this particular vehicle. And uh, you know, various options just to show off a little bit. We could say, oh, I only want to see the last eight locations. Or I want to look at a date range. Or I just want to see alarms. The red markers are showing me where the location when an alarm or an alert occurred on this particular system. And we can see that the very last one that I got was, a, um, was from a, an alert. So did this car fail some violent uh, engine catastrophe or, and stop, or did it just get to where it was going? And I'm just going to drill in a little bit here. Actually, we'll turn on the satellite. We might as well see where we're going. And what we can see is it probably didn't get to home. It stopped at some on-ramp on the freeway somewhere. So we might dispatch a tech, or we might, I mean, or we might have the tow truck bringing it in, and we can, uh, 
we, we need to know in advance what happened to this car. So let's come up here and we can see in the alarm list, we'll go to the historical alarms. And we can see these OB defaults that were being reported to the car leading up to that period. Got a call. For you. I'm, whoever that was, we're not talking to them right now. <laughs> so these OBDs, and OBD stands for onboard diagnostics. So onboard diagnostics are different kinds of uh, uh, faults that are reported by the, by the car. And one of the things is when an OBD comes in, we see the date and the time. Okay, that makes sense. We see what vehicle was on. We also see this OBD code. So what the, what the diagnostic reported was a number P0552. Well, part of our demonstration is we said we need to look up what P0552 is, so we did an integration with a knowledge base that returns the full description of this and uh, took advantage of another new feature in Exceda 6, which is the ability to create extended data items in different objects. So we created a special field that's got the description um, of the alarm. So with that, that's a lot of things to take in, but it gives you a good grounding of where we're going. I'm going to turn it back to, uh, to Dave, and he can explain some of the background. Thanks, Randy. So there are a number of features that, uh, that Randy touched on in this demonstration. First is we've talked for a long time about connecting to anything, anywhere, anyway. Uh, we still give you the ability to connect over wired agents. But we've added the ability on our enterprise to now extend to accept communication from all kinds of devices over all kinds of networks. So you'll hear us talk about the idea of codecs and transports. Codec is just how do I interpret a different protocol, whether that's from a fixed purpose wireless device with a protocol that's already been invented and already released in the field. How do I extend our platform to communicate with that? Or for smarter higher end devices. Um, in this particular demonstration, we actually used a, a smarter module running the Exceda wireless protocol to communicate into our system. So codecs and transports, major new feature of, uh, of this release. We also introduced dynamic grouping and delegated administration, which Randy reviewed. So this is the idea of we can now take and organize your asset population in any way that makes sense for your business and your use cases. So multiple assets of different types into different grouping structures with different access and control levels built over those grouping structures managed by our delegated administration feature. So you can now configure in this hierarchy a delegated administration unit where you assign a user to have privileges over that section of the population and over all of those users that can interact with that population. And the third element Randy touched on with showing the, the properties map all these grouping structures can be configured to be created and managed automatically by the system based on data that's being reported from the devices. So dynamic grouping and delegated administration. Another feature uh, often has come up for us when we're in the cloud, how do you integrate in with different systems? We've included uh, an integration queue, a messaging queue as part of our product, and it's integrated in with our new expression rules engine. So when something of interest happens in the system, like in this case when I see a high severity alarm, I post to that message queue, which allows me to integrate from our cloud-based system to other cloud-based systems, but it also allows us to do it in a way that's firewall friendly. So if we're integrating with a system that runs on-premise at your site, same kind of technology that we use to connect agents behind your customer's firewalls, we allow you to use for integration in with our, with our solution. And uh, another point that Randy showed is when he had this alarm, we did this integration. The whole point of the integration was to have some extended information about that onboard, onboard, diagnostic, onboard diagnostics code. So we integrated in with this third party site. We've added the ability to extend all of the objects in our system. So whether that is a device or a model or a user or an alarm or any of our core objects, you can now extend those objects and attach additional information to those objects in a way that we can then manage and control for you and preserve across updates in your system. 